Hello everyone, I'm Gabe Bentz. For the last few years, I've been running one of the biggest print farms in the world, and we're gonna be looking at some designs of phone stands today and critiquing how they are for mass production. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So first of all, I wanna mention that the reason we chose phone stands is that number one, it's an object that everybody kind of knows and understands. So it's a good point of reference for an item that can exist in the real world. And a lot of people have just created them. But we're gonna look at these phone stands and what I'm looking for is can you make 10,000 of these and do it affordably and reliably? Can you actually mass produce this in a place like our large print farm? And what would you do to tweak it or push it so that it'd be just a little bit better? So the very first one we have is the universal phone holder Holder, one piece printing mechanism, holder kitchen, table, bathroom, storage rack, shower, all corner, iPhone organizer, PHH-02. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Uh, it's done by D. Zusto. Um, he's got about 2,000 designs, which is good for him, or they're uh, just moving designs there. But it's a really complicated model. It looks like it might be intended to be a print in place, but it's just, it's such a, uh, convoluted type of design that it's not something that a person would really like to use because number one, it's just overly complicated. So it doesn't really tell the user how to use it. But also when you have those really complicated designs, if it is in fact print in place when it prints all flat, what happens with this design is that you actually end up having a high failure rate because the first layer is so complicated and the rest of the part has so many individual islands throughout it that you actually end up with something that just has a lot of shenanigans along with it um, to where you don't really want to have to deal with it throughout the, the production of the part. Also, since it prints on such a wide base, uh, auto ejection becomes a lot more difficult. So it's not always ideal for that. So this part, this part is actually such that if it came across our table, we would probably reject it. I mean, even if it was brought to us by like a, a large corporate client who can afford to make a mistake, we wouldn't do it because we would end up delivering a product that wouldn't uh, make customers happy and wouldn't make the client very happy because it, it just wouldn't sell very well. Okay, number two, dolphin and penguin phone stand bundle, hollow and solid version. This is an interesting way to do it. So with the phone stand, this is just kind of an outline. And with just a solid outline, you can basically use vase mode, which is a very efficient way of producing a part. The one downside of it is, is that with our uh, production facility, we only use 0.4 nozzles and you don't really wanna have to transfer over to a different size nozzle. But this outline style is a really good style of design because it is very efficient when you scale it up and you can create really original designs that were not possible any other way. So it's a good model for that, but you are kind of restricted to like large nozzle styles to give it a lot of rigidity. So what you would wanna do with it in order to make it a little bit stiffer is put a lot of ripples in it in the vertical direction. So going back and forth and in and out of the walls like that so that you basically give it some ribbing into the profile while still having the outer edges show the image of the bird or the dolphin that you wanted here in this case. And this model is over on Cults and it's by U3D Print It. Um, let's move on to the next one. Round Phone Dock, also from Cults. Uh, Nicholas Ethiv, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing anybody's name. This model is interesting. I actually kind of like it quite a bit. I, we always kind of lean towards going really chunky and rounded because number one, that gives a, a very robust type of part for production and also just a really robust part for the end client because you don't have to worry about delamination of layers or anything like that. It's very sturdy and solid and it gives that. And if you use that aesthetic, you can make kind of blobby objects and that kind of thing. And this is what that falls into. And it's a cool model. There's some refinement that could be done around the edges. The front lip kind of comes up to a point, which could be rounded off a little bit more. But overall, it's actually a pretty good design. And the fact that the charger stores in the back, not the greatest. I don't generally recommend something like that from a product design standpoint, because it means somebody is unplugging it from their nightstand, putting it into the phone stand to sit there until the phone comes back. So no one would really utilize that very much, but that type of organization is a good idea. And if you're selling the product, a nice upsell. But this is a really manufacturable product, so long as it doesn't have any support in that groove underneath, which is really wide. I would generally have that be a little bit pyramidal or arched so that there's no direct overhangs anywhere inside of the model. Rocking smartphone stand. This is cool. This is good. This can make, be made like super cheap. You can produce almost millions of these with printing and it'd be very affordable because this part just prints on its side and is there. It's also kind of a nifty little idea. Um, it's something that you can throw out there and try out and see if anybody wants it. 
Um, I mean, like this is something that you could stick on Etsy and like plug into our Etsy app so that you could just have them printed off and you'd find out if anybody cares. Um, but it's a real fast, easy test in that regard. So um, this is a nifty one. I'm not much to it. It prints on its side, it clips onto the phone um, and it's easily modifiable so you can make it so it works with every type of phone. And again, this is where 3D printing really enables it because like accessories, you have to update them every year, which means you have to update your molds every year. Um, so accessories can really benefit from printing because you produce them for the lifetime of that core product. And then you can try out different iterations and different colors and different styles um, very quickly and reliably without being hung up with molds and tooling and shipping and the slowness of that. You can just immediately try a new iteration of the product tomorrow. Okay, phone case with integral stand two. This is from Printables by Lobo CNC. This is cool. It's a slip on case with a flip out stand on the back that is a print in place. Oh, this is, this is pretty slick actually. Uh, they're probably using very small pins that can be printed in place even with a thin back layer. I don't know if they clip in place. Uh, clip in place features for print in place are a little bit uh, uh, tough to do reliably because they kind of vary from machine to machine. So the setup of this would be kind of intensive. Um, and it's also a part that prints flat on the bed, back to the bed, which is unhandy because uh, there, there's variance there that changes the aesthetic of the part. So it would get a little bit more expensive there because there's both that leg that has to be perfectly spaced but still clip in, and then also just the surface finish. So this is a part that you would not want to do in white because you could end up with like stain or pock marks on that back layer. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's all kinds of stuff there. It's a nifty design, and as far as print in place goes, it's a really cool way of doing it. I would try to go for something a little bit thicker that can be printed on its side or printed vertically uh, rather than printed flat. But if you print it vertically, then you hurt the hinges on it. So it is a tough, tough design challenge for sure. No support, phone stand, basic phone stand. The, yep, there's, there's not much to say about this. This is fine, this is a good model. Uh, the one thing about this is the fact that it prints on its side the bed surface will be different from the top surface. And you don't really want that asymmetry to exist. So in order to minimize that, I would have both sides come to a point so that like the first layer is like a single line almost, just outlining this part. And then the top is also kind of a point, coming to a point so that it's a single line. That way it's very tough to tell that it was printed as two separate areas. And there, there's a minimum of asymmetry there. That'd be the one tweak. The rest of this stand is fine. And again, tens to hundreds of thousands of these could be produced with printing pretty darn affordably and you don't have molds. Um, and then you can tweak logos, you can tweak designs, you can tweak colors, all of that is really easy. Car phone holder with USB for Samsung S23 Ultra. This is a cool idea. Um, having a slot for your phone inside of your car that you can stick up underneath there. Number one, obviously you wouldn't do this in PLA. For something like this, we would probably also recommend like a TPU because it's just more forgiving and you don't have to worry about scratching up a phone. I don't like the fact that this is two halves. The two halves have the broad side against the bed and the broad side is hatched and it has that pattern in it. You don't need the patterning. It's a phone case. No one needs to look through and see the phone slid in there. If you want the, the appearance, if you want the appearance of that texture, embed it in the surface of the part, but don't cut it all the way through because you complicate the first layer and cause opportunities for error. Also figure out a way how to combine it all. Uh, for a part like this, I would rather than having two halves printed on its the flats like this, I would have them both together printed on the thin edge like this um, so that you still have the strength, but the two clamshells come together, single solid part printed on the thin edge and then the bridging at the top doesn't really matter. Tablet phone stand. Oh, this half moon crescent shape. This is a great design. It is tough to manufacture because it has a really wide surface contact area on the print bed. So ejection is tough and that curve kind of slows stuff down. But it's, it's a nifty design again. If I was tweaking this, I would probably say, figure out a way to like print it up on its nose or somehow so that it doesn't have such a wide contact area. Otherwise, a part like this might almost have to be printed if it was like the tablet stand version that was larger. It would have to be printed, someone, someone or a bot would have to come by and pluck it off and then the machine starts back up, which is just a really slow cycle time. You want the machines to be able to push the parts off and move on to the next one. Uh, adjustable phone and tablet stand. Adjustable, no screws, print in place. Eh. 
This looks like this part has a bunch of support because that inner flap that's holding up the phone would need like side support. So you wouldn't like that. Um, if I was redesigning this, what I would do is I'd have the flap fold down into the front and the front would basically have a slot in it for the flap. And that way you basically have designed support um, inside of it that the flap sits inside of and then pops out of when you actually finalize the piece so that the supports are integrated into there. There's no removal of supports. I'd round off a bunch of the edges, but the hinges are fine and it'd be durable and it's thick and chunky, so that's all good. This is a fine design and yes, it can absolutely be printed in place and this is a great example of being able to combine a bunch of parts into single one single one, so there's no assembly on it, but there's support removal with it how it is right now. So some design improvements to eliminate or integrate uh, the support. And actually, if you were doing that supported slot, there's some things you can do there to improve it more also around like angled edges. Rather than having like the bottom support edge right there and then the flap coming in right up here on top, instead, you'd angle them like this so that the edge starts printing here and then the, to the, the upper um, tongue that's being supported starts printing on top of this, but then you have this angle so it looks a lot cleaner and crisper rather than a standard supported perpendicular spot. So that's just better. Phone stand for use without a case. Oh, this is good. This is a good example of supportless design. This design would be a little bit fragile because of the layer lines running up through the middle of it, but that's not a big deal. I'd round it out a little bit more. I would take those fillets and take them up higher so that that base where the big stress is, is tougher. I would also fill in that center slot so that the two arms sticking up in the air combined together so that you get a little bit more structure, but still have room for the uh, charging cord to go out through the bottom there. But make it like a hole in the bottom rather than a full cutout through the middle. That would refine it and strengthen it a bit because one of these arms will get broken off in shipping even, and somebody reefing their phone in and out of it. People are not careful with your stuff, ever. Never assume people are gonna be careful with your stuff. They're never going to be, ever, ever, ever. Yet another universal phone stand. Uh, ooh, this is rough. This has support. It uses rounded edges. It's printed on its side, which means that you're gonna have sag spots. You're gonna have supported center areas. Uh, there's really no way to win with this part. It can be made fairly affordably because it doesn't use much material, but it's not, it's not a very good design from a manufacturing standpoint. It looks cool, the springiness is nifty, all that kind of stuff. And technically he has like the two arms supported in one of them, kind of the squarer one. But uh, this would be a design that we might turn down just because of the additional support. All this, you have as much support material in this as material for the stand itself in order to support the stand. So it's just, if, if it's like intentionally meant to be like an art piece, fine. But if you're trying to mass produce it, it's not the greatest. Uh, CG Trader, this is a 3D print phone stand. Uh, pencil cup and SD cards in the back with a phone stand in the front. This is a good design, we like this when it's like hemispherical and thick and chunky and everything looks good. They're decently ejectable and that kind of thing. The half cylinder one, we would probably have printed on its side or try to get to there. And the half circle, half sphere one is good, but no one's gonna put a pin behind it. Pin organizers, single pin organizers are not a very popular product and even like the five SD cards, you're putting it behind the phone. So if the person is using the phone, you just blocked off access to the organizer. So the thing you'd wanna do is actually almost reverse that, but then a person can't see the phone screen. So this is kind of a catch 22 and why you don't wanna build multi-tools very often, because they end up doing everything but doing nothing really well. Oh, oh, I loved it, I love this one. Um, it is not very manufacturable but it's a really, really cool design. If you have not seen Clock Spring or haven't looked at his Instagram or his YouTube or anything like that, you really need to check him out because he's probably one of the best FDM designers on the planet, easily. The Clock Spring phone stand, the planetary phone stand, uh, this one's from My Mini Factory. It number one is a beautiful design. It prints without supports and it's technically like 10 to 15 parts all together in one. And when it comes off the machine, it moves and articulates. And you have a planetary gear bearing kind of supporting the phone. It's a fantastic design and it works really well, really universally. I mean, we could take this part, drop it in, start cranking them out tomorrow, which is really cool. The problem that I would have with this is that it has a lot of holes, 
like literally a lot of holes. The, the main panel, Clockspring always puts a lot of hex patterning into his stuff, which looks really cool, but it's not very manufacturable because you end up having the nozzle move from one point to the next and there's retraction points in there. And there's literally hundreds, if not thousands of retraction islands in this uh, design. So we'd want to figure out, a, we, we would recommend rather than doing the through hole hex pattern, just embed the hex pattern, just imprint it onto the plate so that you still have it there, but it doesn't cut all the way through. That way, rather than having multiple islands, independent spires coming up so that as the hex pattern goes up like this, right? Instead of having two points right here, you have a single uniform plane to where it like comes out to the edge here, prints the hex, then goes along the back wall and prints the hex and so on and so forth. So that you're embedding the pattern on that thick chunk. But as far as how the gears mess and how these parts work, oh, it's so good, so good. And everybody should learn from this and use it as an example of how fantastic the design is. Flat fold, phone stand, print and place hinges. Oh, this is another clock spring one. Oh, I like this design a lot too, because it's a flat print that then folds up. Again, the hex pattern could be not a hex pattern. You want the first layer to be simple, but the outer hinges are great. He, the way he does the hinges have lots of individual hinge points, which give you multiple uh, redundancies within it. Um, though at the same time with that, I would kind, I think he did it more artistically than functionally because you also increase the chances of one of them breaking. Uh, I would probably have about half the number of hinge, um, what, what's the mechanical, I'm looking for the mechanical term. Somebody comment down below for the mechanical term of the, the hinge of the hinge, rotating arm, I don't know what it is, but about half the number of those switches between hinge, 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 hinge. But the design is really clever because he has the multiple different angles in the fold, it folds up, it can fold flat, um, it'd be cool if it could fold back on itself. Um, but that's me now just being a commenter myself and being like, oh, be, that's great. But uh, no, it's it's a really good design. Um, and it looks really cool. And again, I always love clock spring stuff. Smartphone time lapse stand. Oh, goodness. So when making anything, when mass producing anything, you want to have as few parts as possible because the more parts you have, the more chances of failure, the more material, the more print time, the more cost, um, and the more opportunities for errors. Especially if those parts are printed separately, then you also have assembly on top of them. Like Clockspring has 15 parts, but they all print in one go. So the machine assembles as well as manufactures the parts. This stand, smartphone stand, is like, it's 12 files, I think it's only like six separate pieces though and like two different versions of the stand. But they're, uh, they have to be assembled and put together. The hinges themselves are not in a good orientation where they'll be very strong and they're really thin. You wanna beef up your hinges if you're gonna have separate assembled hinges. And the parts themselves just need a bunch of support like the square box mounted up there that holds like the phone I think. Needs a bunch of parts. It's It would need a lot of work. Again, this is a part that we would kind of reject outright because there's no way that we can win with this. It'll be too expensive to produce um, and it won't be a good enough product for you. So it'll be expensive and not very good, which is something we never want to really do. Oh goodness, oh yeah, it's got, oh. I'm sorry, I want to be positive about that, but that part really tough um, and it needs quite a bit of work on there. And I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I can't do anything with that. Um, it needs a lot of work to be manufacturable. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. By U3D Print It. Uh, Moji style phone stand bundle with five interchangeable faces. Ah. So here's the thing. I know that multicolor is making a comeback right now, but again, in mass production, you multicolor is not a thing. We don't do multiple colors. We don't have multiple extruder machines. We don't do multi-material prints because it introduces a point of failure again and radically increases the cost of parts. So if it's a multicolor print, all the piece, the individual pieces have to be printed as separate colors and batches. That's not ideal. And for this part, the face, since it's a flat disc, it, it can't be ejected at all. It's printed on the bed and then it's just there flat. Um, but it has to be removed manually. 
um, even a bot can't even like pull the bed or, or remove them off. And you need like human fingers. So it's stupid expensive to produce there. The stand itself, it's got the thumbs up. So it's got multiple parts there, but the fingers will potentially break off. And the like the project where that face is, is it's fine. Um, from a product design standpoint, personally, I wouldn't really much care for this. Um, it's not really my style of design. Um, and the two long kind of arms, um, I would have the full first layer made as a solid layer, not two separate arms. And the faces, if you could give them some depth, if you made them like a hemisphere rather than a flat disc, that would be the way to improve these to where they'd almost be manufacturable and then imprint them on it so that the phone stand can come off fully complete. Um, and if you did like texture and no texture, um, then you could differentiate the face so that it would look good. Um, but that'd be the way to do it. V2 sound amplifier. Oh, I like this one quite a bit too. Uh, the, the amplifier devices are really good examples because they're they're very complex and almost impossible to manufacture any other way. Like this, this one is a spiral. You can't get tooling inside of there. You can't carve that out. It's basically an impossible geometry, but it also has the really cool function of amplifying the sound from one of these phones. The design of this is not difficult. It's a thin walled part, so it prints pretty quickly. It can be ejected. It can also be collected fairly reasonably, but this is the thing that would be like thousands, not really like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. Um, but again, you can't make it any other way. So there's the margin built into it of the rarity of it. So this is something that like you build an Etsy store, you pop up the files on this, take some photos of your prints, and then we produce the orders for you and ship them out for you. That's something really easy to do. Um, and you can experiment with this and change the color and change the look and change the overall design and mess with the amplifier and see how different people have different phones plug into it and just modify it all to where you have like 50 different versions until you hit the one that works. Um, and then you produce a ton of those. And since we're doing all the printing and shipping for you in the background, uh, you don't have to worry about, you can focus on the design and creating those iterations. But this is really great because this is actually a fun functional phone stand, not just a place your screen there phone stand. So I like this a lot. And it is a geometry, it, it's a function and a device that could not exist because 3D printing was never available before, but now it can. It can actually be made without any sort of shenanigans and it's really artistic and it looks great. Um, that's just a great model. So hopefully that was good. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something about how to design for mass production printing of what the do's and the don'ts are. We don't like support. You wanna make the first layer simple. You just keep the design as functional and blocky as possible. But that's pretty much it. Let us know down in the comments if there's other types of files or types of products that you'd like us to review and react to. Uh, and we can go from there. Have a great day, everybody.